All right, let's dive into why the concept of safety disks for a MC stacks, or any stock for that matter, is fundamentally flawed. These disks, meant to safeguard against discrepancies in stock transactions, should ideally be unnecessary. Here's why. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Daily Stock Update. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell, so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But before that, alert this is not a financial advice video. Firstly, let's talk about QSIP numbers. Every security issued by a company is assigned a unique QSIP number, essentially serving as its identifier. This means that each stock traded on the open market, whether through EDIS or exchanges, can be traced back to its origin. If someone borrows a million shares today, there should be a clear record of which specific shares were borrowed, and they should be returned accordingly. Failures to deliver should not be a thing because the system should ensure that borrowed shares are returned to their rightful place. But why do these shares have numbers if they aren't actively tracked? Good question. QSIP stands for Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Procedures and is used to identify various financial instruments, including stocks, bonds, and commercial paper. In theory, this numbering system should facilitate tracking the movement of shares between entities and exchanges. With the right systems in place, it should be relatively straightforward to monitor the movement of shares. For instance, if we take AMC as an example, they could provide a comprehensive list of all shares issued, including any changes due to events like reverse stock splits. This information could then be used to track where these shares end up, whether it's on the New York Stock Exchange with institutional investors or in insider transactions. By analyzing this data, we could gain insights into ownership patterns and identify discrepancies, such as an excessive number of failed to deliver shares. These discrepancies could indicate the presence of synthetic or replica shares, which are essentially counterfeit and shouldn't be circulating in the market. The key issue here isn't just the sheer volume of failed to deliver shares, but rather their legitimacy. Are these shares real, legitimate ones that were borrowed and not returned, or are they simply non-existent shares created out of thin air? We're not just talking about shares that were once legitimate, but have since become phantom shares, we're talking about shares that shouldn't even exist in the first place. So, why bother assigning QSIP numbers if there isn't a robust system in place to track them? Without such a system, these numbers are meaningless, serving no purpose beyond providing false reassurance. It's time to rethink our approach to stock tracking and ensure that every share in the market can be accounted for accurately. Friends, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about today's video? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.